Hey Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here with another Dawnless Days Siege Battle for you today and today we do have a glorious 3v3 here and we are here, I don't even remember what map this is, I don't know if I've actually played on this one um, but yeah it's maybe like Mayhold or something like that, I, I can't remember what it is uh, but it's a, a very very long curved wall here which is pretty much indefensible I would have thought the amount of places you can land. But over on this side over here, we do have Dale with King Brand defending off against the uh, forces of Mordor. It also looks like we've got uh, Dol Amroth down here. Uh, but yeah, we do have the forces of good on this side here. We have Dol Amroth, uh, Dale, and I think the final uh, good faction, yeah, is Dol Willian. So we are using the Last Breath sub-mod in, uh, in this mod. And also the Warriors of Arda is being used in this one. I think we uh, saw it in the uh, Helm's Deep replay recently. And as you can see here, Lake Town Axe Bearers are a new unit that are added with the Warriors of Arda. I don't know how balanced these new units are, but um, yeah, they are uh, very much in the, uh, in the mod. They, it's kind of cool to have them. It kind of like, you know, fleshes out some, some factions, rosters. But I feel like most of the rosters are fairly good and fairly balanced in a way. Each side lacking something. But on the attack here today, we do have two Mordors. Um, we have one of them pushing over here with Uruk bodyguards already shifting on up. And then we also have a Gondor, so we do have uh, one of the forces of good and uh, has joined the forces of evil. So yeah, Gondor allying with Mordor it is very disgusting to see. We've got lots of uh, troops hidden here in the forest. We've got Boromir with his Oskiliath veterans leading the way. So yeah, Boromir has clearly been corrupted by the ring and has uh, decided to join the forces of evil. Also, we've got lots of uh, orcs as well there as well. I'm surprised that those orcs are resisting to not eat the men and eat their lovely soft man flesh. But uh, yeah, so it does seem as though the defenders are going to give up the walls and not going to fight for them. They're looks like going to fight for uh, sort of like the uh, the cat point here, which I think this is it is the cat point here, right where all these um, Amruthian watchmen are. So it seems like they're going to have to uh, push forward their lines a little bit just so they're not contesting for the uh, the cat point the entire uh, match. And then uh, it looks like we've got Lords Ravanian as a unit as well. Okay, so we've got like a shock infantry unit here. I. I feel like we've seen these guys before. They look pretty badass, that's for sure. Um, the Lords of Ravanian. And then just give Dale a uh, shock unit. But again, I don't feel like they need it. They used to have one back in the days. If you used to uh, be an OG of the mod, then uh, yeah, Lake Town Guards used to be a shock infantry unit instead of a uh, instead of a pole arm. But yeah, Dale seems like he's had a few units. And I don't think um, what we know the arm was having because it's a separate uh, sub mod. So I doubt they can add the units to that. There you go. Morgul Orcs going in against some Axe Bearers. <laughs> yes, if you're enjoying the things on the channel and like some more Lord of the Rings action, then do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're on here, and a comment show support. It really does help out the channel. And it looks like we're going to see Lake Town Guards being shifted forward here as well to come and support this fight. So the two Lake Town units being thrown into fight side by side. It'd be cool now that this is a unit, like uh, the Warriors of Arda have like a few more Lake Town units. Like I've always been saying we should do like a, a Lake Town only, a Lake Town like men only. Uh, defense of uh, of Lake Town it kind of makes sense because like Dale and Lake Town are like technically separate entities. I don't know if really Dale like I mean obviously Lake Town outlasts Dale um, in, like the Third Age, and then I don't know if Dale like really like reconquers it or like they just kind of like start paying tax to Dale when like Dale kind of comes thing again. Because Lake Town kind of just gets destroyed. So I guess maybe Lake Town just uh, Dale repopulates Lake Town after uh, the desolation of Smaug. I don't know. And anyway, Lake Town Axe Bears here are losing uh, to Morgul Orcs and Uruk Spears. Oh, that's not that great. A heavy axe infantry is losing. I don't think these are any good. Like I said, I don't know how balanced the Warriors of Arda like humans are. I would presume. I would hope like well balanced, but you never know. Yeah, you can see here that the 
uh, the actions are thinning out and soon the pole arms are going to be in here on the road and that's when you need to start focusing them down. We've got Urukach over here about to do that it seems. They are set up ready. I mean, my primary target would be to take out those uh, Lake Town Guards or the Tirith Air Sentinels which have also been getting a little bit of a, a fire from the Archers it seems. There are Lake Town Guards here as well waiting for the Morgul Orcs to get through the barricades. There's a few Tirith Air Sentinels that stuck the wrong side of the barricade it seems. It's just like, oh god, how do I get out? I can't do it. I must fight on. They do look awesome. Very Macedonian to like land giant to luck to them with that shield and when it has a pike out, it's a bit more splat right. Oh RIP to this guy. Oh and there you go, they're breaking through the orcs are finally through the barricade. Looks like they're gonna be fighting the uh the late town guards there. Also some orc spears fighting on the side of that phalanx. Got more late town axe barriers shifting down. Got Williams over here as well. Finally, guards already been thrown into the elite, already been committed by the defenders, never a good sign. But yeah, this is definitely a snack and drink worthy match. I've been told that it comes down to a very few amount of units left for this siege battle. So if you haven't already got yourself some snacks and some drinks, I fully recommend you go do so before this battle gets too spicy. Yeah, it looks like the Europe's are being held back from now. They are losing um, and, and at the moment. And the Diamond Guard should be able to take a fair few of those strong units, units down with them. And we are going to see Sentinels as well go into fight their deterrent uh, Sentinels. So that should easily uh, mop them up. The attackers have landed on this side here. It uh, looks like they've uh, activated... Well, they haven't activated any of these traps. Uh, these uh, fire traps here. But yeah, Uruk Throng are landing. Gondor is a little bit slower, but is arriving uh, just about now as well. Though he doesn't have any siege equipment here ready to go. I'm not quite sure how he's expecting to get in. He's got one ladder to get his whole army over. Um, so actually, if you were in a defender, this would be a perfect army to really try and face off against. Because, yeah, they brought no siege equipment. Uh, so you, they'd be funneling up one at a time um, and you could just put one unit there and hold them off but that should be a, a defender's dream but uh, it's a little late now for, to try and do that but uh, it's just always it would have been handy to have like, known that I guess Gondor had no, no siege equipment Prince's Marksman here setting up it looks like uh, they're going to try and rely on cheap archers to try and get through I mean to be honest Dol Amroth doesn't have great archers it's not one of their strengths so um, I think they have some like rangers available um I never seem to see anyone bring them. It seems like the Prince's Marksmen are brought up. People like to cash out more on the uh, the more expensive stuff, which I kind of understand. Like, their shock's pretty good. And, and like, this, fleeing. Like, the, uh, the pikes and the swords are pretty solid. Lots of uh, cheap watchmen in this one, though, which is kind of interesting to see what they're going to do in this one. Dale is actually getting focused on the Marksmen. Dale getting ripped to shreds by the uh, Oak Throng. Totally Hopefully they're trying to... Um, replicate this themselves, Dale, and focusing the uh, Uruk archers they are, which is good to see there's a fierce archer battle going on. Mordor is nearly spent on this side, actually. If you look at it, they've not got much left. They've got a uh, trebuchet over here, um, which I don't know where the actual trebuchets are. Oh, have they been destroyed? They have. Wow. So Gondor wasted a lot of money uh, on those trebuchets, and they got destroyed by war artillery. There is a troll in Enemy here as well, Nolokai. But apart from that, Mordor, Mordor's force, and the general, the Witch King, um, but apart from that, Mordor's forces are all inside the walls, really. Like, trolls are, um, might be sent through the gate. I don't know. They might make a difference. The thing is, they're going to have to try and get through pole arms and pikes. Brand is down here. He's taking a lot of casualties over his body, so that is a problem. If uh, Brand was to die... Dale's morale and army might just capitulate. <laughs> yeah, Dale's holding on, trying to do his bit. Like, but this is not looking good. This uh, this choke point here with the axe bearers and the uh, pole arms is definitely, I think, the weakest spot. Uh, the bardings can go into combat okay, but they've got a lot of shock over here. A lot of the units uh, that Dale can say in, in. So they're quite capable of holding on. I like how they think this is the last stand. Oh, is it um, Ethering? That's what Ethering now looks like. It does, actually. I just never look at it from this direction. Also, Ethering. Yeah, I guess it is. It literally is the same setup. Okay, yeah, this used to be the uh, end cap point for Ethering, but they've changed it. 
Um, I like how they got all these units uh, like Seniors, stuck in here. Look to your men uh, the Vari Warriors and the Tirith Air Sentinels. They're not going to be defending there, that's for sure. But yeah, they kind of made the cap point uh, into a different spot, which is kind of makes it a little less defensible. I don't know how easy it is now for the uh, defenders to hold it. I feel like this is definitely still a wall defense in a way. It's not an easy one, but it definitely is probably easier. In a, in a sense, they're holding all these streets because once you get off the, uh, like off the walls, there's so many streets that attackers can go down. Acolytes of Morgoth. Okay, so Mordor has new units. I didn't even realize this. Are these like servants of the eye, but just dismantled basically. I mean, look at it. Very cool. They got like an elite sword unit here. They're going up against the champion of Thor Emil and Avari Warriors. Barry Warriors are losing. These guys used to be really tough, but maybe these acolytes just really, really good. I do not know. They are like Bron and Chevron. It's the champions of the door, and they'll go back in. They need to because uh, the Barry Warriors are not going to hold on their own. That is for sure. Gondor now landing uh, troops inside the wall. A lot of cav. Uh, I don't know how Gondor thinks he's going to get this inside. This is kind of wasted out here. It's going to have to dismount all that cav. Because there's no breach point that's been opened up here. I don't... Oh, yeah, and this wall's all indestructible. Ah. That's interesting to know, I guess. I guess, yeah, curved walls probably... Uh, if they get destroyed, it probably is kind of... Uh, a bit game-breaking. So, yeah, it's just easier. So, um, yeah, this is really really dumb, to be honest, with the defenders to even bring uh, Cavo to this side. It should have been on this side here, uh, where there is a gate, and you can also destroy these walls, I presume. Yeah, these are all just Okay, so we are back. Uh, pretty much where I left off. Watch the replay did crash. So, uh, yeah, that was fun. Uh, but, yeah, we are pretty much back where we left off. We have a fresh unit of axe uh, bearers in here. Lake Town axe bearers turning the tide around, defeating these units. So, yeah, the pole arms and the other axe bearer got defeated here. And, uh, yeah, they are now in. And we've got the Terrace Air Sentinels as well in here. Spiking and impaling this Uruk bodyguard. So it's a nice area. I saw a win for them. It's nice that they can beat the Oracle Bodyguards. I expect no less. There's a pike unit facing up against the sword. However good your sword unit is, if it can't get uh, close enough to the uh, pike unit, you're just going to get kebab. And uh, yeah, it looks like they've really tie, uh, like pinned back the Oracle on here, like these Vining Guards here. And now we've got Lords of Revining going in as well. Some tough, tough units for the Oracle to try and break through. And there's a lot of Oracle units tight, like stuck in this choke point. I'm going to be able to get out. Acolytes are more goth in here as well, so they've sent some of their elites in there to try and uh, break through. It looks like we've got, yeah, Rook Bodyguards, more Glogs. It looks like the um, Olakai are about to go in as well. So uh, we'll wait for that, see whether they can break through the, uh, the pipeline. They're actually losing now, just as the pipes are coming in. Brace, men! Your men of Dol Amroth, whatever comes through those gates, you will stand your ground. And there come the Olakai like in the film there you go in he goes the first Olog is getting straight in there and starts slapping about he really hit his own troops there oh this guy fell down get up soldier get up and right, looks like we're going to see the axe uh, the axe bearers coming in and try and help out we'll try and flank into the side of these other bodyguards not a bad idea and uh, maybe also do some damage to the Olakai they're actually losing one or they've lost one already what two Dead in the door? No, oh, where did he die? Was he just uh, the old odds already been in? Oh no, yeah, he's dead out here. Oh, I think he ran into a spike. That is unfortunate then. That is unfortunate. Uh, over on this side here, doesn't look like it's changed too much. Um, this is a bit of a problem though for the defenders. This is what I'm saying earlier. I was saying that, you know, once you get off the walls, it seems like it's going to be pretty difficult to defend all these streets that the attacks can come down. They'll just have more men than you. They just usually do. Uh, like, balance of power, 4,900 against 5,800. Yeah, and you can see already the Uruks here are threatening to flank the Avari Warriors. They're going to have to set up further back. The Foot Knights here got to, like, stand on this hedge to avoid getting flanked. Um, but, yeah, then we've got Uruk Bodyguards here. They're going to get challenged by Vintergard. So, uh, yeah, these 
can hold the ground for a little while. Whole arm unit here. Don't win it. But uh, it's where they can do, so like, just pin them for a bit and then get the uh, Knights of Silver Swan General to go around the side, do some damage. There's also uh, archers here. They're just going to focus down those uh, those pole arms. But yeah, really, that general needs to get around and just uh, hit these Uruks in the side. Maybe also support and uh, taking out the Acolytes over here. I don't know whether they can do that, too. But the Knights of Zolan are now engaged. Start slicing and dicing these Uruks. There you go. The Barry Warriors are finally given ground. They're going to go into break. Uh, do Gondor's not really actually engaged yet. Whether he's going to be a reserve, I do not know. But yeah, the Amaruthian Watchmen over here, they're going to be the first line of defense. Uh, looks like a Yard Patrol's also getting focused down. I think that's his Gondor actually shooting there. Yeah, Black Root Veil Archers the enemy doing their, their bit. Units. This is going to be a problem, though, for the attackers once uh, this Mordor army gets defeated, which I imagine it's going to be. Um, they're going to have to uh, face off against another like Dalian army, along with a few elements of uh, Dol Amroth over here as well, and Dolwynian in fact. Um, but yeah, the trolls are starting to make some damage and make some things happen here. So it looks like those trolls are... Seven out of eight of them are like, clearly the Caltrops are doing to stop them. But they're clearly uh, gonna get through these pikes eventually. I thought they might stop, pike might stop the trolls with some long. Orakai are like, supposedly able to take out Founding Guard and multiple Enemy units of them. If used correctly, so uh, Tirith Air Sensors, I'm not surprised, did not stop them. Yeah, the, uh, I don't think the champion, uh, like the Lord of Ravanian over here, also going to be able to stop uh, the trolls, but we'll see. Yeah, most of the infantry's been defeated. Oh, there's a Nazgul, there's a shock infantry unit? Okay. That's kind of cool. I do kind of like that concept uh, from Warriors of Arda. I don't know like they don't have a sword though, what happened there? But it's kind of a cool idea, so it's a very, very elite shock and it's probably gonna be like really hard to kill, probably unbreakable. Uh, but yeah, that, that's, yeah, I guess you maybe run them down with cav, it might be the best way to counter them. Obviously there's no real cav inside, but yeah, actually there's another gate, it's looking like a real problem, but the trolls are dying. Five out of eight and they're losing decisively. Um, but the Nazgul, well, they're probably going to take out all these Lords of Ravanian. They're just absolutely slicing and dicing through them. Uh, there you go. The General is also getting involved. Oh, no, it's a different General. So we have both Generals uh, on this side. The Swan Knights and also the Vine Lord Bien also getting involved in their, in their uh, separate fights there. You know, you've seen Uruk bodyguards getting destroyed, pretty much. The stakes here, I don't know whether the uh, Cav ran over those or whether the uh, Uruk's destroyed them. Go with the, maybe the Yorix destroyed them, which will help out the calf here. I think we're about to see a separate charge into another Uruk strong here. They are like the calf is really a wrecking lives inside, and Gondor won't be able to bring their own calf inside to help because there's no gate over here. And calf can't climb walls last time I checked. There's no K charge, to be fair. Yeah, this Swan Knights don't want to be getting a bit, a bit too hasty. I'm going to get cut off. There you go, that's not a bad win there, you know, they've kind of forced back the Uruks on that side. I'm seeing a lot of uh, Uruks break here, it's just the Acolytes that are holding on, these guys are clearly tough nuts to crack. They kind of have made Mordor really strong in the infantry department, which I don't mind, but uh, probably not too bad. There you go, yeah, the Acolytes are uh, going to hold on. They're exhausted, come by even, still holding. <laughs> I like how these guys are rallying behind in enemy lines. Uh, the Amaruthian Watchmen over here, they're dying, no surprise. Being beaten back by their uh, fellow Gondorians.
sad day for the Kingdom of Man to see Gondor and Dol Amroth fighting off against each other, that's for sure. And again over here, these Watchmen, I don't know whether they just needed the numbers or something, but uh, yeah, these spears are just yeah getting wrecked, these poor Amorothian Watchmen in most areas. The Vari Warriors are holding there though. More Watchmen going to try and sneak around the back, that's not a bad idea. Can they uh, outflank or even go for these archers here? Maybe try and silence those. There's a lot of archers here. There's Founding Guard that could get mobilized, but uh, yeah, they've uh, found a sneaky way through. Going to need reinforcements in here soon, though, to stop Gondor's spears. Um, but yeah, the Cav, you know, the two Cav generals doing a good amount of work there. The Vine Lord Bien also uh, contributing as well. But I think after a while, you just got to accept the fact that sometimes you've got to fall back. And they might need a fall back anyway, because uh, Dale um, isn't coming anytime soon by the looks of it. Uh, so we are seeing, I think the uh, Olakais might be the other unit going in now. And also the Nazgul are starting to die, but they're taking a lot of units down with them. It was going to be not a decisive victory on this side for, for Dale, but it was going to be a lot um, like more decisive than it's looking. I mean, there's a couple more uh, units here available. They've still got Lord Zervani and Vineland Guards. They've still got some elites up here that are being kept in reserve. Brand's up here as well, which is probably safe. Better safe than sorry, because Brand is uh, looking a bit weak. But uh, yeah, they could do something in these final few units, uh, including the Spears and um, Pikes there, just to finish off these units and then uh, send over the rest of Dale's, uh, Dale's forces to come and help over on this side, which they can do very, very soon. Ravari Warriors, they're coming in soon. Fire Warriors holding on here, doing their bit. I'm over seeing Watchmen, they're doing uh, not too bad either. Oh, here we go, Gondor's calves now inside, but it's just going to be dismounted, so it's not really a big threat. I don't know how many, how much of the stats they keep, but uh, I've been told that Cavalry, even when dismounted, keeps some of its stats. Um, Uruk's wrong, have managed to break through, and these Yard Patrollers are all routing here, so they're actually getting into the Archers, it's a real problem here. Um, for the uh, defenders, it's actually kind of a, a big opening that's now cut, being formed up here. We are seeing pole arms as well, Vinter Guards getting destroyed. You, marksmen over here, there's actually not enough infantry to defend all the these choke points. Fallen. We're going to have to see soon uh, some support from Dale if they can get it over here. They might just have to accept that they're not going to defeat all these troops like quickly. But it looks like they should. Not much left here. Worry, worries, yeah. We're going to have to see those pikes come out of there soon because that's not the final defending point. Dolaroth needs to realize that. The general is dead, though. Uh, that is uh, the Witch King. So that's not the end of the world, really, for the uh, attackers. That army is pretty much dead anyway. You need to get one of Gondor's or the other mortal army. The champions of Dor Enil in here fighting off against their Gondorian counterpart. Spears against Shock, not going to do well. These are militia Spears, the best like levy Spears against Shock and Tree. It's going to get absolutely wrecked here. They uh, need to they need to get out of there. Well, yeah, it's not looking good. They're really trying to hold on. These uh, Champions of Dora and they'll have to go into this fight here against Gondorian Swords because they've broken through Prince's Marksman. Golamroth has not had a good, done a good job of protecting his uh, his archers and it doesn't seem like either is uh, Dorwin yet. He needs to get out of here. Get out of here, boys. Yard patrollers need to retreat what we've got there. Yeah, behind them, guys. Get them back. Get them back. Still got plenty of reserves as well to come up. These are all Mordor's troops here. Guards of the Teeth, Morgul Orcs. They're all coming up. More Urukarches with full ammo. Not looking good there. Gonna have to see a great turnaround at some point. The 
Yeah, these are uh, Amorithian Watchmen here with their little sneaky flank has not paid off. But they are building the Gondol Spears here. And these Fountain Guards are pretty weak. I think they've been shot up by archers, but... Uh, yeah, they are pretty weak, actually. So that's another good asset that has been taken out, really, by the uh, attacks. But still got another... Uh, by the defender, sorry. But they still got another Fountain Guard here. And there's a big pocket of uh, defenders in here that's going to get killed off. There's two units of uh, Dolamroff Knights in here that are going to be surrounded and chipped away at and killed. That small pocket of blue is going to get tighter and tighter. Knights of Dolamroth will fight on for as long as they can. I don't know where their generals are. Oh, they've already fallen back. I wonder whether they are going to capture... It's a victory point. It's not necessarily actually the cap point, um, as you can see here. So it's just going to give a morale, um, like, sort of debuff. So it's actually not going to end the, uh, end the game. So it looks like the defenders are going to fall back just to this small corner of Ethering here and try and hold on here. So it could end up being a pretty grindy finish for the, uh, for the attackers here. They have got... Ooh, they might have enough to get through. We'll see. These Avari Warriors here. Oh, they're going to get cut off. This is a sad, sad sight. Look at this. They're going to have to hold their ground here. I think you could definitely... Like, this is a little bit bold here by the attackers. The uh, defenders definitely could have used their generals, I feel like, to maybe try and hammer and anvil this. Because the Avari Warriors will hold on for a while. Seems like Dale's going to try and go to their rescue with some Lords of Ravadian. I feel like the generals could have been sallying out and trying to uh, help out there. The elves will hold on in the service of Dorwinian. I don't know why they're here, but they, they are here. We yeah, the uh, Lords of Ravanian. I don't think actually they've fallen back as well. They're like, now nah, we've changed our mind. I think probably because they're seeing reinforcements on their way. They're like, you know, it's, it's over. Yeah, it's, yeah, maybe it is. Nazgul arriving as well. So we're getting five out of nine of them. I think these ones might have retreated from over here. I don't think they've killed them all off, but I don't know. We've got Vari Warriors there holding the uh, the bridge. They've got a pretty strong defense there. We are seeing a resupplies going on, which is good to see. Good to see the uh, players are using their resupplies here. So Dale is resupplying up his marksman of Dale, getting them uh, as much ammo as possible. Uh, Yard patrols also probably want to do the same. Yeah, very, very good. And they still got an elite pike to hold that final tier. So yeah, we're playing it like the old Ethering, really. Instead of that being the final cap point, and we are actually going to see um, the defenders uh, retreat over here. So I guess that actually is not a bad way to balance um, because there isn't really like exactly like a cap point. People can still play like this is the final defense, which clearly it's, it's kind of built to be, to be fair. It is a final single choke point on its own here after you battered through all these other spots. But you get a morale debuff if you decide to play that way decide to play that style you are going to get a morale debuff if you give up that ground they're going to take that square and that's going to help the attackers rather than the defenders so i like that actually to be fair i've never i'd never really saw it like that but that's i was kind of like thinking Enemy like the, play, the defenders here are giving up the game they're going to lose uh but no it's actually kind of a nice idea i like it nice to the silver swan here anyway they're going to be uh going out the general here this is a bit of a risk but he wants to silence these black reveal archers not a bad idea, but there are some nasty, uh, nasty units over here. Founding Guard and a few spear units that could do a little bit of damage. Um, so yeah, we'll have to see. Personally, I feel like they could probably take most of those archers out. They can focus them one at a time. You can't set up as many archers um, by the uh, by the river as you can uh, on the defending side. It looks like the general here is going to go even deeper into enemy lines, and he's going to silence these archers. There you go. In goes the general. Gonna start slicing and dicing. He's gonna try and get through. I mean, he's a little dicey. Try. I mean, most of the unit is gonna get around. 
and then you can see here the gondol spears. They, some of them got stuck on the spears, but most of the unit did go around the spears. They're going to lose a lot anyway. Yeah, you can see here, look at this, losing decisively uh, the uh, nice silver swan and also the Vineland Bien. Now coming in to save its fellow generals. Not a bad idea. This uh, might have ended in a bit of a disaster, though. The, if these two generals both die, I don't think the winning's got too much. They've got a couple of Vincent Guard, though. And they have some of the archers. The Lamros still have some very good pikes, so that they do not want to have even more of a debuff if they lose their general. But yeah, they kind of pulled through there, the Gondor archers. Most of them are still standing, in my opinion. So I don't know if you should really have gone through that. What's he going into next? Open space, which is probably the best scenario but it looks like oh Dol Amroff really wants to try and save his knights well he's gonna cheeky charge off I mean he's gonna route these Uruk archers okay that's okay I guess they have no ammo they're already wavering why not yeah there you go I guess that's a free win um thing is that they are they're pretty much cut off they need to go back this way the Levine and Bien's got the right idea go back up this way through this part of the city and then across that far bridge over there which is defended by uh, i think that is defended by the tirithair sentinels so yeah they're going to try and go back that way because that's the only way the other bridges are blocked off right now by uh, forces of evil so yeah this general is actually in a real bad situation <laughs> he's got to get back uh, but there you go that po final pocket of dol amroth knights silence we kind of knew that was going to happen at this point but yeah that's sad to see boromir just inspecting as his uruk allies land on the walls here She's like, oh god, we've got to work with these Oryx. After ridding them in Oskilia, they're now going to uh, like work with them. Ah, uh, not a big fan of that, clearly. But we're going to see the uh, Blackroot Vale archers coming in. I think this general's going to be accepted. He's not getting home. And he's going to try and take down as many archers as he can. I guess that will help with army losses. I mean, it's 1,400 against 18, uh, 2,800. So it's not, it's not bad. Uh, Blackroot Vale archer didn't even respond to getting charged. Uh, whether the general here could, uh, yeah, he could needs to go for this archer. This one's got ammo left. Try and science this one. I don't think you could route it. He can certainly do some serious damage to it. Good charge there by the general. And, yeah, I don't think you route it. It's just a lot of archers to kill. If it was a, like a healthier unit, then I'd be like, yeah, you can get that. He's going to pull through. Uh, that's a bit cheeky, to be honest, from Dol Amroth's general. It's going to go into the back of the, uh, I think this is the, the Nazgul over here. This one's okay, I'd say, to pull through. Uh, because it is li quite literally nine men. Even if they are nine unkillable men. There you go, that, that is general, general dead. Is dead. So Dol Amroth's general moment. did get stuck in combat there against the Black Reveal archers and got killed. Serves them right, really, for all the pulling through. And also going back the weirdest way. Vincent Guards holding on, they're fighting off against a horde of Gondorians down here. I don't think they're going to beat the uh, Founding Guard here. They're just going to get beaten hand over fist. One's elite, one isn't. It's Mark and Dale. They have got Silver Chevrons, and I think they've earned most of these from just sheer focusing down of units. They used a lot of ammo to, uh, to get to the stage they've had to. I don't know what they're really shooting at. I'd have saved your ammo and use it for guards of the teeth that are yet to come. These guys are going to be uh, the killers. It looks like, uh, yeah, a main push is actually coming over here. A lot of spears being sent across. Uh, the calves being sent across Gondor Cav. And they're dismounted for. But yeah, this is clearly where the hammer blow is going to come from the attackers. Can they hold the defenders? Can they hold? Lord's Ravani in there now. Here come all these uh, Gondor infantry and cavalry. We've got violent guards on here, the Vari warriors. Yeah, the uh, Lords of Ravanian in there. So they've got some good units. 
And then uh, the Vinter Guard there. Ammunition. They're starting to die. That's not good. Marksman and Dale. Um, they are giving up this bridge. I mean, there is literally nothing going across this bridge. They might be okay. And the uh, Vinyl Bjorn actually looks like he's going to get out of there. He is hidden. Um, he's decided to go and hide away in a corner and just be forgotten about. And yeah, he looks like he's going to get across. Othrod, by the way, has just been left outside the wall. I don't know if they've forgotten about him or what, but they probably want to bring him in for abilities, if not for his elite Urux to be uh, used in battle. And it looks like we're seeing uh, David Marksman run out of armor. So yeah, that is a, that's not a good sign. They're now being employed in the front lines. Yeah, there you go. Marksman and Dale, they look like they're not going to hold. The Vinter Guard are trying to hold off two separate bridge, like bridges here. Try and hold there. Oh, it looks like uh, the attackers have finally realized that that bridge is no longer being defended. Guards of the teeth, lots of archers going in that direction, and swords, more glocks. Uh, so, yeah, it looks like the Yard Patrollers, they're not going to be holding it, that's for sure. Got violent guards here, though. They could definitely be employed into defending that bridge. Uh, but they might need the Territh Air Sentinels. Yeah, they're going back that way as well to counter those uh, guards of the teeth so that is good to see but yeah it's tough we've got violent yard patrols here with no ammo whether they can resupply i do not know Yeah, um, violent guards here, healthy. They beat so many violent guards here, I wonder. And more yard patrols going in there. I feel like send them elsewhere. Manpower's needed elsewhere. Also, um, I like how some of these units are just rallying behind the enemy lines. Kind of cheating, you know? Come on, guys. Come on. A final Bjorn also needs to make himself, uh, keep himself alive. But if the opportunity arises, make yourself a problem. Maybe like, I don't know, charging Boromir maybe might be an idea. Trying to kill him. Uh, like that, that cav unit is still pretty uh, scary at 35 men. It could do some damage to Boromir here. It needs to make itself a threat and uh, just, you know, offer something. Or maybe just, just, just to force units to stay back. You know, force one of these guards of the teeth not to go into melee because it's busy watching the rear, which exactly is what it's doing right now. That's perfect. That's exactly what they've got to do. That general's just got to make itself useful in any way it can. And that's not so good. I don't know how they've quite got through. Uh, there are a couple of uh, Vincent Guard holding the line, but actually there is pretty much no no men defending that side of the bridge. And yeah, the uh, Warriors of Lost now going into the back lines, rear charging these uh, Binding Guards here. They're going to need some support. Where is um, where are the reserves? There are no reserves, sir. Uh, Binding Guards going in here. They yeah, they're going to have to. And then the uh, Terra Sentinels over here. Poking away, guards the teeth. I feel like they should be able to beat the guards the teeth. Both are elite, but Pike have a better range. But uh, whether the archer fire might also just start to dwindle the numbers here of the Dol Amroth Pikes, we'll see. Yeah, should be able to hold there. It's looking okay. And uh, they have pulled the violent guard out of the uh, the line over here because I think they had a bit too much. They have just about enough, I think, to, to hold for a while. Avari warriors and violent guards, and then should hold for a little while. They've just got to defeat something. I think they could defeat this, I think. The, the units they have, if Vineland Guards to units them, a third one potentially being sent in. That's definitely probably enough to defeat the Founding Guard and, uh, and all these swords, I think. The Founding Guard are coming off the um, off the bridge. I don't know if they set up the formation properly. They don't look like they are. 
Oh yeah, they look like they're having issues. They're looking the wrong way to start with. There's hope, you know, and they're up, so I'm getting beaten back down there. And it, this is potentially could be one. Guards the TK look like they're losing. They've lost 10. They're losing more. They're losing one at the same rate by the looks of it. Pretty much. Oh, there you go. Guards are losing. I thought they might. I don't know if the archers are set, able to set up on that bridge and shoot. Might be an issue. So uh, that might be promising as well. If the pikes can hold on there, that's good. And then eventually that pole arm is going to have to turn around and either go in. Or it's... Uh, and then that's when Vinelord Bien takes his opportunity to go in. Uh, also, Boromir is now being sent across. This bridge is pretty much clear for him just to come straight across. So they're going to need that Vinelord Guard to deal with him. But here he comes, Boromir. Corrupted by evil. sarn has been whispering in his ear. And he's sending his Oskilius veterans. who have been fighting orcs for so long. Now to go in and try and get a victory for Sauron. And uh, it's... Uh, and they're actually, they stand their ground and respect it. It's not really anything said. It's like quite literally one violent guard. I wouldn't say there's a pull through it as such. One violent guard took a hold back 110 veterans. He's pulling back that, uh, that violent guard and he's going to try and uh, deal with them. The best he can do at this moment in time. There's not much else. All reserves are committed, so nothing can either go in and hammer an anvil. Boromir, which they might need. If they can kill Boromir, Gondo might break. The bridge over here. Holden. It's Holden. But he has a lot of battered units in here now for the attacks. Actually, this might be the most likely to win for the defenders, I think. The attackers have a lot of battered, like Uruk Throng, Morgul Orcs. Gondo calves in here. It's the most healthy of anything. And the spears aren't going to do much, much pushing. So actually, that is more likely to win, I think. Oh, and there you go. Vinyl Bien's gone in. He's seen an opportunity. He's taking out archers here. Some Uruk archers getting silenced. Really nicely done there by the uh, Dolphin in general. Very, very good. I think he can take this as well. They're wavering. They should die. Um, Othrod is finally woken up and is on his way in. I'll just let you know. That actually also um, is definitely open for taking out because as Othrod lands off the walls, Vinyl Bien could just uh, charge in. And he could just start uh, smashing them as they come off piece by piece instead of like taking the whole unit on at a time. That actually might be an idea. But he's actually pulling out and he's going to try and get the Uruk archers again. Wasn't a great charge because the Uruks actually were running away. They didn't take the charge properly. And it looks like we can see the Founder Guard now turn around, leave this engagement here to protect the bridge, to stop the Vinyl Bien, causing any more havoc. That is really going to help as well. Brand is nearly dead though here. This is not good. I don't even think Brand should have gone in. He should have just left him. He's not a reserve as such. He just needs to stay out of the fight. Because he's a tiny little unit. And then he's going to give debuffs in a moment to these uh, violent guards. When he breaks. And then dies I imagine here. But yeah there is Brand. He's going to get sliced and diced in a moment. Is he actually going to fight Boromir? Boromir might get the... the oh I think Boromir sort of got the... The killer blow on him. There you go. Boromir killed Bran. How dare he. The enemy have rallied their units. Yeah, that's not going to help. Um, but yeah, actually, Island Guard's been a beaten Boromir anyway. So that might help. If they manage to kill off uh, Gondor's gen here, Boromir, then that might really help. And also, uh, Vinyl Bien's going in and he's actually hammer and ambling all these units over here. This isn't helping morale either by the looks of it. He's got to be careful, but there is Vinyl Bien mounted on his horse. I don't know really what's one spear and one cab. Not looking good here. I would just pull out the Vinyl Bien if he can get out of there alive. He was quite deep in enemy lines. So I think they've got this. They've got some healthy uh, Vinyl Guards in there. They'll wreck those guys. I'd start shifting reserves over here because the Founding Guard are moving back across. With guards to the teeth. Yeah, they're not happy with that fight against the Terrathair Sentinels. They're falling back. We're just going to see Morgul Orcs. I'll try and take on the pikes. I don't think that's going to work. Go on, boys. Pike them up. Pike them up. Stab them up. Not long left. Six or seven minutes left. 530 against 1100. Orthrod has landed pretty successfully. He is coming in like drips and drabs. So this is what I was saying. You should charge him when he, uh, when he was coming off the wall bit by bit. But he's arriving. 
He's going to be needed. This 160-man unit of elite orcs, they're going to need this unit soon. Uh, the Vinyl Bien, though, just keep yourself keep yourself alive. I don't know if Dor Dorwin has got a, a few uh, Vinyl Guards left. Decent charge. He's the Gondor Swords there, you know. For every charge, there's a risk to his life. Is he down to now? 16 riders. There's definitely not enough to dent Othrod. He might do some damage, but won't do much. There you go, they've managed to route most of these Gondor Swords here. Violent Guard should uh, be able to deal with this final unit here. They're going to get help from the uh, Violent BM once again. In he comes. Come on, boys. In you go. Yeah, decent charge. Violent BM, funny enough, has the exact same face as the uh, Gondor Officer, I believe. Kind of funny. So either the uh, Gondor officers impersonating the king, or it's the other way around. There you go, Gondor's routing. Gondor is routing. I don't know if Morum is actually dead. He's not. But they just routed because they're just getting rear charged. That is a big win. Probably army loss is also probably coming into it to a certain extent. They're going to win at this uh, bridge as well here. So yeah, this is going to be super, super close. Um, it could come down to things like Brand now being dead. Dale's units could route at any moment. Uh, this one here is getting encircled for a start. That's not a good sign. Um, also, looks like uh, Dol Amroth is going to fall back. When they get the chance, it looks like... I mean, they might be falling back here just for cover because the archers are probably shooting across that river. But uh, also, they might be thinking once they defeated this, which it looks like they will, fall back to this single choke point instead. Give yourself a better chance. Less fronts to fight over with what remains. Boromir, though, is about to die, I think. Is wavering. There you go. I think they got. Yeah, they got Boromir. I don't know if he's dead. And they need to be careful with that vinyl at the end that they don't just get impaled on a on a pole arm here. After all that hard work he's done. They should try and get around the side of the uh, Founding Guard a little bit more. Try and do some more damage. And here we go. Othrod's coming in. So another elite sword being committed now. If they manage to kill Othrod, wow. Then they're looking the real good. Because uh, Mordor's morale is definitely not as great. These Mordor, uh, Morgul Orcs would break. Obviously, they're relying just really on the guards of the teeth. And they're sending another one this way. So they're sending one back this way to help out. It's the really just pole arms now that are dictating lives. the battle. They need to try and pull back, make traps for the uh, for the pole arms. So there's not got enough height to fight all these pole arms, and I don't think tear it there central to be bounding guard. I'm not sure they might. I'm not sure. Bounding guard are doing okay. Oswald, there he is, that ugly looking guy. Kicking away at trying to kick some uh, man flesh for himself. Yeah, Violent Guards waving now. 31, no surprise. General Sarna uh, has gone as well. We're getting flanked by Guards of the Teeth. They're coming off that bridge. Yeah, that's not good. That's not a good sign. And they're re-engaging over here as well. What is this in here? Oh, Avari Warriors. So they shift these guys across to help defend the pole arms. Uh, the pike, sorry. Not a bad idea. Guards and Sita, they probably will overwhelm a weakened turret there, something like this. Interesting to know that a healthy one like matching up against each other. These guys come out on top, turret sentinels. This is where it's going to be decided, I think. If they can break this, and they've got a chance with the Vinyl Bien's here, nearly dead. I don't know if... The, um, and there you go, yeah, he's broken. That might now crumble the morale here of the Darwinian Vineland Guard. They're already losing. The introduction of Oswald right at the end, making a big difference. I thought the Mortal maybe just forgot about him, but no. They left him at a clinical moment to come in. Yes, 
silver chevron. I don't know how many chevrons they started with. They might have started with just um, three bronze, but they've earned one. And the violin, uh, sorry, the founding guards are starting to uh, starting to die, as are the guards of the teeth. Interesting. It's just Othrod making the difference right now in this fight. He is actually causing him to win these fights. Otherwise, the violin guards, I think, defeat those founding guards because they're flanking them. Our men flee the field of and over here again, this guards of the teeth display. are being defeated by Tirithir Sentinels. Even a healthy guards of the teeth cannot break through the Tirithir Sentinels. Incredible stuff. And they're just in last breath units, you know, so they're not overpowered. They're fairly, like, they're balanced. This is interesting to know. Well, actually, now they're back to even. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's all going wrong. And there you go. Whole arms break. I think it's just with the loss of jet units. Uh, army loss after a while came into effect. And uh, there we go. A valiant defeat for the uh, forces of Dale and their allies there. Um, so, yes. This was sent in um, from the, uh, the perspective of Jack, uh, who's playing as Dale. So, thank you very much, Jack, for sending this one in. 229 kills with the Violent Guard there. Not too bad. Another one here getting... 413 though which is incredible and then uh 265 kills with the lords of ravanian 240 with another one here late town axe bear is getting 121 kills 318 and then the late town guards getting 146 kills marks and adale getting 288 to uh 324 kills then we have crambles crambles playing as darwinian 306 kills with the vine lord bien 279 with the violent guard here another one getting 230 kills uh, Vari Warriors, 129 kills. Uh, Vinter Guard, 202 kills. And then the Violent Yard Patrol is 251. Then we have Levi playing as Dol Amroth. 387 kills with the Knights of the Silver Swan. 229 kills with the Knights of uh, for Knights of Dol Amroth. Uh, the Champions of Dol Enil, only 94 kills. The Pikes did pretty well, actually. 156, 151. And his Archers, 195 kills. But I feel like he could have definitely protected these guys a little bit more. They had a lot more to give, I feel like. Then we have... Um, uh, Pani Ker Keraniku, I don't know, probably butchering that name, but Pani playing as Gondor, um, getting 257 kills with the Gondor Sword Infantry, 169 with the Warriors of Lozanark, 193 kills with the Gondor Spear Infantry, 244 with the Founding Guard, 198 with the Blackfruit Vale Archers, uh, and then the Cav here getting 109 kills. Then we have Jimmy Page playing as a Mordor, 127 kills with the Witch King, um, is Morgul Orcs, 150, uh, 141. Uh, Uruk Bodyguard getting 117 kills. Yeah, these Acolytes of Morgoth are only getting uh, 59 kills. But the Nazgul, nine of them getting 202 kills. Seems very overpowered. Very scary. Um, and then we've got, yeah, Uruk Arch is getting 99 kills. And then Olokai, 70 kills. Then we have Wula playing as uh, the other Mordor army. 239 kills with the Morgul Orcs here. His uh, Uruk Throng did a lot better. 238, 298 kills here. His Acolytes of Morgoth getting 141 kills. Um, and Urukar just getting 102 kills and his trolls getting 121 kills. But there you go, guys. That is today's Dawnless Days battle. If you did enjoy this siege, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to show support. Feel free to join my Discord if you want to get involved in any sort of Dawnless Days shenanigans. And yeah, hopefully up on your screen now, there's some other awesome sieges and battles from Dawnless Days that you can go and check out. But until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.